You've probably already seen some amazing quality videos shot with an iPhone on places like TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, and maybe wondering what you can do to get the same quality videos from your iPhone. In this video, I'll be going through camera settings and how to shoot with your iPhone to get the best quality video. This video will be split into two parts. The first part will be just shooting simple video with your iPhone that you wanna to upload to TikTok or Instagram. And then the second part will be for people who want to take it up a notch and shoot almost cinema style quality sort of video from your iPhone. Also, if you haven't already, make sure to check out my other video where I go into how to shoot amazing photos with your iPhone. Before we get into it, I do want to say that this is very much orientated to those who have a newer iPhone, maybe a 15, 15 Pro, because the newer iPhones have more features, more functionality, and they also have better lenses and better sensors to shoot high quality video. So before we even get into shooting video, we need to actually adjust our camera settings so that we have it set up so that it can shoot the highest quality video. So we're going to go into settings, we're going to go to camera and in here we're going to adjust a few settings adjust a few options and just explain to you what exactly they do so first up record video i have that at 4k at 24 frames per second now some people might prefer 30 frames per second some people might prefer 60 frames per second but the reason why i choose 24 frames per second is because that's what most tv shows and movies are shot at they're shot at 24 frames per second however i have found that for social media like tiktok and instagram shooting at 30 frames per second or shooting at 60 frames per second can also look fantastic because it can make the footage look a bit smoother. If we scroll down, I have show PAL formats disabled. I have enhanced stabilization enabled, action mode, lower light disabled, HDR video disabled. Now HDR video is just a preference for me. I prefer to shoot video that's not shot in HDR but it really is down to personal preference. Also, FPS is off, lock camera is disabled, and lock white balance is also disabled. However, lock white balance can actually be a very useful feature when we're shooting high quality video, ProRes, log sort of footage, but I think for most people, it's okay to have that unticked. We're going to go back and we're going to go through the other settings, record slow-mo. So record slow-mo isn't a feature that I use that often. I think you can choose any feature here that you like, any option. Record cinematic, again, I have this at 4K at 24 frames per second. When it comes to formats, we're actually going to ignore most of the stuff here because most of this is for shooting pictures, but we're going to go down to the bottom and we have Apple ProRes and ProRes encoding. So I do have both of these enabled. And the great thing is you can actually quickly enable them or disable them when you're in the camera app but the ProRes encoding which I currently have as log is only available on the 15 Pro and the 15 Pro Max. If you have an older iPhone or you just have the standard 15, you are not going to see this option. It is only reserved for the 15 Pro and the 15 Pro Max. And then as we come out of the formats option, we go to preserve settings. So preserve settings has a bunch of handy features where as the name suggests, it preserves those settings. So you don't have to keep enabling them, disabling them, or changing camera modes or whatever. You can see everything that I have here, camera mode, creative controls, I have them set on. Depth control, I have set off. Macro control, exposure adjustment, night mode, portrait zoom, action mode, I have set off. Pro raw and resolution control, Apple ProRes, live photo, I have all of those enabled. And then I have spatial video disabled. So yeah, you can play around with these. I have them like this because it makes my life easier when shooting video. If we come out of there, we can see a few other options. I have record stereo sound disabled. I just find that I think it's easier to record mono sound. But again, this is really down to personal preference. Use volume up for burst, scan QR codes. Um, composition, we want grid on and we want level on. These two features are very, very useful for when it comes to lining up shots, making sure that your camera is level. I'd highly recommend having both of these features enabled. And then as we scroll down, again, all these features are mainly for shooting photo. So you don't have to worry about this too much, but if you wanna follow what I have here, you can follow what I have here. Another important thing to note here when it comes to shooting Apple ProRes on an iPhone like mine, where I only have 128 gigabytes of storage, you will be limited to shooting ProRes at 1080p. Now, you can change that by connecting an external SSD. I would highly recommend connecting an external SSD anyway, when you're shooting Apple ProRes because Apple ProRes can take up so much storage on your iPhone, it is absurd. Like the file sizes are absolutely ginormous. So having it all on an SSD makes your life so much easier because it's not taking up storage on your phone. The SSD I have here is the Lexar SL500, which is perfect for this. Thanks to Lexar for also sponsoring this video. 
It fully supports recording ProRes log at up to 60 frames per second, whilst also maintaining a low temperature. The issue with a lot of external SSDs is that it's very important to have one that can support the huge file transfer speeds that ProRes log recording needs. This SSD does that. It's super thin and compact too, much thinner than a lot of other similar SSDs. And with it being USB-C, you can plug it directly into the bottom of the iPhone 15 Pro. And then when you're done recording, you can just simply plug it directly into a Mac or a PC and offload the footage very quickly. This is an ideal way to record lots of ProRes log footage without taking up a ton of storage on your iPhone. To show you how easy it is, I have the drive here. We have ProRes log already enabled, but we can see we're limited to HD at 30 frames per second. We're going to plug in our SSD like so, USB-C, and now we should be able to choose the 4K option like so. We can see USB-C has been detected, so it's already connected, and we can shoot 295 minutes of footage at the full 4K, and we can change the frame rates as well, 24, 30, 60, very easily. There we are, it works right away. If you are interested in this SSD and want to expand the storage on your iPhone, I will link to it down in the description below. So now we're going to go into the camera app and I'm going to show you how to set it up to shoot video very simply for places like TikTok and Instagram. So let's open up the camera app. We're going to make sure that our ProRes log option is disabled. The best thing about the camera app on the iPhone is that a lot of the options you see here, you can just tap to change. So I can simply tap the HD option to change it to 4K. I can quickly tap the frame rates to change the frame rates if I like. I can enable action mode by clicking the action mode button. But really that's it. Because we've already gone through the effort of going through our camera settings and making sure that they're set up correctly, you should just be able to hit record and start recording high quality video with your iPhone. There are a few other options of course. We can swipe up to have a look at some options here. And I don't know if you've seen on TikTok and Instagram, you might have seen this aesthetic where things look quite dark and moody. That's very, very simple to do. What we simply do is we tap the exposure meeting here and we bring down the exposure to maybe like minus one, minus 1.3, whatever you think is suitable. And as soon as you do that, it brings down the overall brightness and the overall exposure of the image, making it look a bit darker, a bit moodier. And that's how lots of those sort of darky, moody aesthetic videos that you see on TikTok or Instagram are shot. They're just simply lowering the exposure. It's very, very simple. If we want to quickly edit and sort of change the colors of our video, we can actually do that in the Photos app. You don't need any special app to do that. So I have a video here, which I shot in Italy. It's just a very static image here, very simple. You can see some very slow sort of move, movement in it. And what we can do is we can just go to edit and then we can go to adjust. And there's a lot of things we can do here. We can already see that I've made some exposure adjustments to make it a bit darker. We can make a bunch of adjustments here. You can already see I've brought down the shadows as well to make the shot look a bit darker. Uh, I've brought down the brightness of this shot too, just to give it a bit more of aesthetic. I've changed the color temperature to make it warmer. There we are. And then we can go to filters as well. And I found the filters on here are actually pretty good. And the great thing is we can adjust the intensity of the filters. One of my favorites is the dramatic one. They have dramatic, dramatic warm, dramatic cool as well. And the great thing is we can adjust the intensity of the filter by simply sliding across the intensity filter, intensity sort of, I don't know, bar you could say, beneath the filter itself if we think it's a bit too much. But I really like it. I think the filters that, that are already built into iPhone actually look really good and they do a good job of the footage that is shot with an iPhone. Now, when it comes to shooting ProRes log footage, which I would recommend for people who are looking to take their sort of iPhone videography to another level where they're trying to get more cinema style video, I wouldn't necessarily say this is good for TikTok and Instagram because it requires a bit more work, but I'll show you how simple it can be and how easy it can be. And of course, I'm going to connect up my SSD. We can see USB-C connected. We can see ProRes log is enabled as well. And we can see our max time is 368 minutes. So yeah, simple as that. I would then shoot ProRes log footage with my iPhone. And then after I've shot it, I'd take my SSD, the SSD that I have, I connect it to my MacBook and I'd edit the footage there. So this part of the video is for those who will be shooting ProRes log footage and want to color grade their ProRes log footage. Like I said, if you're someone who only wants to shoot for Instagram and TikTok and just wants to quickly shoot some videos, you can skip this part of the video. It's probably not that important to you. But for those who want to make their ProRes log footage just look a bit more cinematic, this is perfect for you. So I've loaded up Final Cut Pro. I've loaded some clips into Final Cut Pro as well. We can see these are some ProRes log shots that I've shot with my iPhone but they actually already have Apple's LUT on it. So when you import a ProRes log shot into Final Cut Pro, it automatically applies a LUT just to make it look normal, you could say. 
But what we're going to do is we're going to disable that. So you click on the info tab here and then you make sure you have extended selected and then we can see camera lights right here. We're going to change that to none. And this is what it actually looks like straight out of camera. Quite a flat picture, doesn't really look that nice. It looks quite gray and boring, but we're going to change that. So we're going to choose our video clip. We're going to first bring in our custom LUT. So we're going to go to color, custom LUT. We're going to drag and drop that on. And then we're going to choose some LUTs that I've created here. I'll leave a link to them for anyone who's interested in them. You can find free LUTs as well, but these are some custom ones that I've made for my own footage. So we can go through them, see what they look like. Number one, number two, number three, and number four. I actually think I like, I actually think I like number four the most because it, actually not number four, number three the most because it adds a nice blue tinge to the footage. But we'll bring down the intensity because I think it's a bit too strong. And then what we're going to do is we're going to choose the color wheels and we're going to drag and drop the color wheels. But we can see the color wheels have been added below our custom lot. We're going to actually drag it above our custom lot because we want the color wheels to have their adjustments first and then apply the custom lot. So we'll do it in order. So we're going to choose our color wheels. We're going to increase the contrast of our image. So we're going to bring down the shadows like so. We're going to bring up the highlights. The highlights actually look pretty good already. And then we're going to bring down the midtones like so. Automatically makes a huge, huge difference. To see how much of a difference we've made, we can just disable the effects. You can see that's what it looks like straight out of camera. And now this is what it looks like with some minor adjustments and a custom LUT. So we'll do that as well for another clip. We'll choose this clip here. We'll of course make sure that the Apple Log LUT is disabled. And then we're just going to simply copy and paste our LUT, a custom LUT, instantly. It makes a huge difference. It just looks so much better. We can, of course, choose some of the other LUTs that we have. I actually think number three might be the favorite again. Yeah, number three looks pretty good. And again, we can make some quick adjustments. We'll maybe bring up the midtones to make the image a bit brighter. Bring up the highlights, bring down the, bring down the shadows. There we are. Huge, huge difference. This is before, this is after. We'll do it for one final clip. So let's have a look. Uh, maybe we'll do it for this one. So again, we'll disable the Apple Log lights on this one. Then we're going to copy and paste our one on. And there we are, it already makes a huge difference. We'll bring down the intensity though, like so. And what we'll do is we'll bring up the highlights, bring down the shadows. There we are. I think that looks pretty good. We'll actually choose one of the other ones for this one, just to show you a little bit of a difference. We'll choose maybe this one. It makes it look warmer, makes it look nicer. Yeah, I do like this one. This one looks really good. We'll bring down the highlights a little bit like so. Bring up the mid-tones. There we are. That looks fantastic, I think. So that's before, flat image straight out of camera. This is after with some minor adjustments and a custom LUT. Now this is a fantastic way to take ProRes log footage shot with an iPhone and just make it look more sort of cinema style, more sort of filmic. I really like it. I'm really glad Apple implemented it on the new iPhones, the iPhone 15 Pro and the Pro Max because it gives people like me the ability to shoot very cinema style video with a phone, with a device that fits in our pockets. So that's it for this video on how to shoot high quality video with your iPhone. Hopefully you can now go out there and shoot some amazing quality footage with your iPhone. I do have videocreatorcourse.com where I have some lessons and some courses on there about shooting footage with your iPhone, about shooting YouTube videos with your iPhone if you guys are interested in that. Before I go, I have this sort of gentleman's agreement where I make these videos for free for you guys to enjoy. Hopefully you guys can learn a thing or two. And all I ask in return is that you like and subscribe. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more.